not really sure if I do software studies, so I thought that I would um, present or introduce some work that I'm doing right now and let you decide. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I belong. While social scientists have examined video surveillance systems as technologies for preemptive social control, few have considered what the police and other users of these systems do with recorded surveillance video. One of the first things that investigators do now when arriving at the scene of the crime is to look for cameras, and it's routine for police to seize video from places within a mile of where a crime occurred. However, as any investigator will tell you, surveillance video is often virtually unusable in its raw form. It's no, it is notoriously poor quality as a result of lighting conditions, bad camera angles, degraded tapes, compressed and multiplexed video, and other problems. Thus, a significant amount of work must be done to surveillance video in order to transform it into evidence, to make it function effectively as a technology of proof. In this research, I examine the post-production work that investigators do with surveillance video using video forensic systems, software and hardware packages that integrate nonlinear editing, digital imaging, and database technologies to enable investigators to make productive use of surveillance video. While the digitization of visual media is commonly viewed as further disrupting the relationship between image and reality, it's also important to, to consider a less examined question. How is digital imaging software being applied to visual images in order to reinforce their status as evidence of the real, to lay newly empowered claims to the truth of visual media? Video forensic software is designed to enable users to make authoritative claims about the indexicality of surveillance images, to transform a chaotic and potentially meaningless field of recorded vision into coherent and direct references to real people, places, objects, and events. One of the leading video forensic systems used by law enforcement in the US is designed and marketed by two companies in partnership, Avid and Ocean Systems. Ocean Systems is a small private company that has designed a suite of software called Detective. Avid is a much larger publicly traded company with revenues of almost a billion dollars last year, and it offers the industry standard in digital nonlinear editing systems. While No Country for Old Men may have swept the most recent Academy Awards, there was another big winner on Oscar night. The Bourne Ultimatum swept the editing categories with awards for film editing, sound editing, and sound mixing. Like many action films out of Hollywood, the production team for the Bourne film worked with an embryonic script, the plot fully taking shape only in post-production. As editor Chris Rouse claims in a testimonial video at Avid's website, this film would not have been completed if we hadn't been working on Unity, Avid's media asset management system designed specifically for storing, accessing, and sharing media in collaborative workgroup environments. According to Avid, the presence of their technology across the, across the media production industries is so vast that content creators often wonder how they ever managed to get their work done in the days before Avid pioneered using a computer to digitally manipulate film, video, audio, and 3D animation. The language of content creation and digital manipulation disappears from the product descriptions for Avid's video forensic technology. Instead of creative tools that have revolutionized the way the world tells its stories, the Avid forensic tools offer proven applications developed specifically to help law enforcement professionals turn raw images into real evidence. The distinctions that Avid makes between its creative and forensics products should not obscure the symbiotic relationship between these different applications, however. Technologies borrowed from the world of high-tech creative production are helping law enforcement and security agencies address the major limitations and problems they have faced with respect to both the quality and quantity of surveillance video. Okay, so. Um, the Avid Composer Adrenaline System, is, um, it's the, it includes software filters for frame averaging and automatic demultiplexing, highlighting and magnifying, um, in, inserting screen notes, using picture-in-picture, -picture and a host of other functions. In the paper, I discuss the way um, that these filters lend themselves to both visual acuity and visual opacity, so the production of certain meanings and the erasure of others. Avid also has a whole suite of uh, archiving and search engine 
te uh, technologies, Avid Nearchive, Avid Media Manager, Avid Media Network. These are the database search engine and work sharing programs. So I discussed the importance of these archival technologies for managing the overproduction of visual information being generated by closed circuit television systems, and especially as a means of effectively um, data mining the past. In his analysis of the relationship between database and narrative, Lev Manovich, who I just met today, asks how our new abilities to store vast amounts of data to automatically classify, index, link, search, and instantly retrieve it might lead to new kinds of narratives. Here, Manovich is interested primarily in the creative and aesthetic possibilities opened up by the merging of database and narrative into a new cultural form. But the question likewise needs to be posed about the possibilities opened up for creating narratives of the real. What narrative building strategies are introduced or enhanced by the intersection of surveillance image databases with the storytelling priorities of law enforcement and security agencies? It is not only the ability to manipulate images and extract more information from them that matters. Equally, if not more important, is the capacity for mining video databases, connecting images gathered in different contexts, organizing and reorganizing media, editing shots together from multiple cameras, different moments in time and different locations. In other words, the application of post-production techniques to the task of constructing compelling narratives of the real. The very real creative possibilities opened up by new database narrative assemblages should raise questions about the claims to truth made with new video forensic technologies. Just as nonlinear editing systems are enabling creative professionals like Chris Rouse to make films that they could not have created otherwise, they are likewise enabling an emerging class of law enforcement video specialists to accomplish much more with a vastly expanding storehouse of recorded surveillance video. Thanks. <laughs>